Welcome to the entertainment section of Impact. I am independent filmmaker John Russell Kring, and I am here with some rock and roll superstars of the you know minute variety, and I'm talking about hype here. This is Miss Talia Dennis and her uh, father and manager Stan Dennis. Thank you guys Hello. so much for being on the show. Thank, Thank you for having us. Talia Dennis, the, you're a pop singer, you're a gymnast, you do a little bit of everything, don't you? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> So far, I'm doing gymnastics and music. And, and you you just finished a tour, is that yeah. right? Yes, over the summer. I'm starting to, um, I have a few more shows left, and then I'm probably going to two or more next summer. And um, How does I, that happen? How do, you, how do you decide that I'm going to be a pop singer at, what, you're 11 years old, right? Yes. I just grew up with music my whole life, and we always watch concerts every night, and it just I've been with music for my whole life, basically. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, Stan, you're her uh, father and yes. also her manager, so yes. you're responsible for all of the embezzling and offshore accounts where That's all right. her money's been going. That's right. All right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, how, uh, in your house, was it just really important for you that uh, she learned just the history of music? Or yeah, you know, I've always been a huge fan of music. I'm not a musician myself, but I've always been a big fan of music, and I, I've always been um, intrigued by live music performances. So we've always had a, a large live music library of DVDs uh, ranging from Eric Clapton to Britney Spears. Right. And uh, Talia was just uh, always around when we were watching those videos and, and really since she was born and even before she was born we've watched some kind of a live performance almost every single night. So she just grew up you know, watching live performances and then also we brought her to a lot of live concerts. She's probably been to 50 or 60 shows between SPAC and proctors and places like that uh, in just her short 11 years. So I think that the the influence has been there from you know right from the beginning. What was the what was your first show that uh, you ever saw? My first show um, was it um, James Taylor. James Taylor was your second show. Your first show was Gavin DeGraw at Skidmore okay. College. You were three and a half years old, <laughs> running around dancing, and and everybody just was amazed to see a little a little one. They're running around like that. So as they as they say, you were born with the music in you. Yeah, I was. Awesome. That that that's absolutely so. But making that transition between okay, I love music, but now I want to make music. How how exactly did that happen? I mean, when, what was your first performance? When was the moment you knew? Well, I was at my dad's company, and he had a party, and I just went up and sang when the um, other act had a break so I sang and I just loved singing so so you just walked up there took the microphone and say okay these guys they suck I'm gonna show you <laughs> what a real artist can do is that is that pretty much it or no <laughs> How did, I, how did you feel, Stan? I well, mean, were you just like, oh, yeah, I hope she doesn't stink? Yeah, or, you know, <laughs> you know well, we, we had seen her singing at home, and she, okay. she was very young. She was only four years old. And um, we have, were having a, a holiday party at one of the companies that I own, and we had hired some entertainment to play. And when they took a break, she asked me if she could walk up and sing into the microphone. And I said, yeah, not thinking she was actually going to do it. There was a big crowd there. Right, right, right. And she walked up and started singing a Sarah McLachlan song. And... Um, Wow. Everybody was amazed. Everybody stood there. I mean, and was this, this is a twinkle, twinkle little star here. You're going for Sarah Mack. I mean, this is like you know Lilith Fair type stuff. And wow. So and uh, she's uh, actually one of your influences. I understand. She is. Yes. Yeah, because you also play piano. I do. Really, really well. Also, not twinkle, twinkle little star. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's just absolutely amazing. You're getting such a young start. And how, Stan? How? How did you decide that you wanted to put your energy, your effort, your money, your time into building a career for someone at this age? Yeah. Well, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, if we look at it from Talia's perspective or who Talia is, um, one of the things that I've noticed about her that have been very apparent since she was very, very young is that she's been very charismatic, outgoing, and not fearful of crowds and, and, right. and just being in front of people. So that was one of the ingredients that was important. And probably the other one has more to do with me in that just, I, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. And I opened my first company when I was 17 years old and I've been doing it ever since. And so, you know, when the opportunity came, when, when she showed an interest 
And when there, when there seemed to be some ingredients there that made it possible for her to do this right. um, with her own self, then I said, let's just go for it. it. That's just the way that I do things in general, you know. Um, and we were also fortunate enough to meet uh, somebody, to know somebody who's been very influential to Tally, who, who made this very important uh, or very possible to, and that is? Brian Mansell. Right, Brian Mansell. Um, Brian is, was, for a long time, was Leon Russell's guitar player. Leon okay. Russell, a very right. famous musician. Of course. And Brian actually wrote a song for Talia. This is stepping forward a little bit, but actually wrote a song for Talia when she was eight years old um, for her to, to be able to perform. And if I take a step back for a second, unless you want to talk about it, Brian started coming over to our house and, 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 and sort of fell in love with Talia like an uncle um, at a pretty young right. age. And, and I remember times with Talia in her pajamas learning piano from Brian when she was like five and a half, six years old. Right. Um, learning how to hold a bass learning how to hold a guitar, right. learning how recording happens, things like that. So a lot of things fell into place and then I decided to, I, I said, let's just, give it, let's just give it a shot. And it started out with a microphone and a little PA speaker. Uh -huh. And it's come a long way since then. A lot more money, a lot of time, um, a lot of effort has been spent and now we travel with a full big rig, with a full sound system and light show, with sound engineers and roadies and techs and, and it's a whole, it's become a whole big thing, which I have to admit, I did not expect it to become. Right. What is uh, what's touring like for you? I mean, uh, do you miss? Uh, it, do you feel like you're missing out on a normal childhood? You know, or are you uh, are you getting a whole different set of experiences? A little bit of both because when I am at gymnastics, I like socialize with all my friends. Like that's basically where all my you're like a are. level eight gymnast. That's like one of the top gymnasts that you can possibly be. I mean, so that's really tough too because it's like. Both things are demanding a lot of your time, right? Yeah, but you have to focus both with both of them because if you don't focus, you won't get through it. Do you feel like your gymnastics is informing your musical career and your musical career might be informing your gymnastics? I think that... You looked really confused when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, that's a logic problem. Let me think th about that for a second. <laughs> um, I think that gymnastics helps with music because... When you have to perform out there, you, you get sometimes a little bit nervous, and it helps when you have to perform on stage. Right. And um, now I'm not really nervous for stage anymore because I'm so used to doing it on gymnastics and music. Well, uh, that's a great segue. Nice job, by the way. Uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, one of Talia's performances in concert.
this call Give back what I lost Absolutely <laughs> awesome. I mean, you're up there. You're like a little rock star. And and also, there's like some edge to your music. I mean, well, who, who would you say you've patterned yourself after, kind of? Well, some of my biggest influences are Paramore, Sarah Bareilles, Peter Gabriel, a wide range of like different kinds of varieties of music. And, okay, in this age of like the internet and that type of thing, okay, how exactly do you break you know, I don't care if she's 21 years old, you know, how do you break somebody and let the world see exactly what they have to offer without, you know, millions and millions of dollars of promotion behind them? Yeah. You know, now is an interesting time in the music industry um, in that there are more opportunities than there's ever been for the normal people, if you will, the people who have not been found by, you know, uh, Sony Records or, or, right. or one of the big, the big labels. Um, but the problem with this being a time where anybody can get their music out there on the internet is that there's so much music out there. Right. And so it's never been more difficult to be found, mm -hmm. although you, you can easily put yourself out there to be heard by all, everyone if everyone knows to go find your music. Right. So what we have done, the way that we have done it, the way that Talia has gained so many thousands of fans over the last year, is we have sort of put the cart before the horse. Talia has, ha, did, did make a, a very high quality record. But, uh, w when she was found by a couple of, of, of big name producers. But really, the way that people have come to find out about Talia is through performances. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and so we have an unusual um, scenario where when you call a venue or when you call a place where people gather and you say, I have an 11 year old who's touring with a full band, um, do, would you like this family friendly show? They almost always say yes. Mm -hmm. Because there is no such thing. There is right. there is nobody else. Right. You know they don't have thirty young people coming there to, to draw a young family crowd there. Right. So be, because of that, because of of, of the novelty of right. Talia being so young, the way that we have broken her, if you will, is um, we have put her in front of thousands of people playing live. Right. Now that that creates its own problem in and of itself, in that you have to be able to perform. Right. And it can't be like your typical pop star where most of the magic is done in the studio. You right. need to be able to actually do it live. And fortunately, because Talia has studied so hard, um, she can do that. Right. Well, and I understand that you also, you are the owner of uh, Rock School, which is basically it's uh, where people can come and learn how to be in a band, <clears throat> learn music, and that type of thing. You uh, study there, right, also? Yeah. Yep. You like, a, you know, practice, you know, I, I guess you have voice coaches and yep. things like that. And uh, somebody would say, well, okay, you know how to sing. That's fine. How is that different than actually studying to be a singer and putting the work into it? Well, there's so much more to singing than you would ever think because there's a theory to singing. There's like a kind of way where a better way to get the sound out. And it just makes your voice sound so much better when you really know all that stuff. Excellent, excellent. Uh, talk to me about the rock school. Has this always been something that has interested you, the idea of, well, now that you've seen Talia do this, now are you tr trying to mentor a, you know, a whole generation? Right. Well, it's interesting you say that. First, the first thing is, you know, when people hear that I own rock school, the first thing they say is, a lot of times, is, oh, well, now we know how Talia got into doing this. But in fact, the inverse of that is what happened. Right. Talia um, f had this interest in music, which we nurtured at home, she got found on YouTube by a couple of producers, and really that launched my interest in uh, how other young people could become educated. And it's not just young people, but Rock School for the most part has a younger clientele or a younger student. Um, so watching Tally come up through music and watching how she did it uh, really motivated me to try to cr create a company that would do that for other young people. So Rock School came because of Talia. Talia did not be come because of Rock School. Now, Rock School is a company that teaches guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, piano, all the things that happen in popular music. And um, the goal is not necessarily to create a whole bunch of Talias, although we will probably have, and we do have, some extraordinarily That's talented terrifying. young people. The thought of like <laughs> one hunt, you walk into Rock School and you come out looking exactly like this. That's right. This. That's right. That's right. 
I'd do it. I'd do it. I I can work it. I, the braces would. Be I, right I would me. do it too. I would do it too. <laughs> So, but you know, but so, so, so the idea is is to let y people enjoy learning music by playing the music that they want to play versus the music that someone else wants them to play. And although theory is important and we take it very seriously at rock school, it's not the first and foremost thing. The first and foremost thing we think should be enjoying playing music. Right. And most of the musicians who have really changed the world and changed the musical landscape are not people who, who did so because they had such a theoretical. Uh, knowledge of music, although that is an important and good right. thing to have, but they did it because they were passionate about music and somebody motivated them when they were young to just go for it and do it their own way. And that, so that is uh, more or less what we do at Rock School. Right. So if you're starting this early in your career, does that mean by the age of like 19 you'll be retired, burnt out, probably laying in a ditch somewhere, uh, you know, hepped up on caffeine? I mean, you know, what exactly? Uh, where do you go from here? My goodness. I just wanted to keep playing music my whole life. I mean, for gymnastics, you have to stop at a certain age because sometimes you get too old. But music, you can just keep going and going, and that's just what I want to do. So, really, this is your passion. This is You, you don't care if you're at a coffee house or you're in front of 100,000 people. Nope. I just love playing in front of any kind of people. Great. That's, that, you know what, Talia? I, I love the fact that you know, someone your age has such a passion and such a love for music. And uh, I actually do love music. I did not just get this Nirvana t-shirt out of mothballs. <laughs> I actually do wear it on a semi-regular basis. So thank you so much for being uh, on the show. Stan, awesome to see you. Uh, thank you. And uh, guys, where can people find uh, Talia Music and the, uh, how can people find Rock School if they're interested? They can go to taliadennis.com and they can look up some of my music. There's videos, photos, all kinds of stuff. Awesome, videos too, great. <laughs> and uh, for Rock School, you can go to rockschoolmusic.com. Fantastic, well thank you guys so much thank for uh, being you. on and uh, maybe people will say, I, st I knew her back when she was on Impact <laughs> and now look at her, oh my goodness, she's on the cover of the National Enquirer. All right, <laughs> thanks so much, Talia. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching Impact. We have all kinds of cool stuff. We have really short people and we have really bald people too. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.